Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. With me, as always, is the director, cameraman, producer, and the power behind the throne. He's also my husband, Phil Gordimer. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you're watching us from. It's lunchtime here, so we're going to start out. Who else doesn't start out with a cocktail for lunch? And today, we're starting out with a Manhattan. We haven't had Manhattans for a while. And since we're talking about meatloaf today, having a brown cocktail that started with an M seems appropriate. All right, look how glorious that is. So I'll come to you because evidently we have a couple of people on Facebook who think that it's like uh, Superman and Clark Kent because they never see us together. Okay. They only see us on this split screen. So let me come around just to dispel <clears throat> that rumor. But if they've been watching from the beginning, they've seen us toast together, but that's okay. All right. See, Clark Kent and Superman. Are. What, no kiss? No. Oh, wow. I'll go Good back luck. to my director's chair. Yeah. All right. Today, it's all about meatloaf. We're talking meatloaf madness. <clears throat> what does meatloaf mean to you? How do you make meatloaf? How often do you have it? All kinds of, all about meatloaf. So I'm gonna start by making my meatloaf. I have a nice big bowl. You need a bowl big enough to move around in. <clears throat> it starts with the meat. Now, I'm using something that's probably unique to America. I don't know if they have this in the UK or Australia or other parts of the world. This is called a meatloaf mix uh, here in the Delaware Valley. In some other parts of the country, it's called meatball mix. But it's basically beef, pork, and veal all ground up. And it's a great mixture of these flavors and fat content. I'm gonna put these right in. This is a little over two pounds of meat. Now I know some of you may object to pork and or veal, and that's fine. You can use all beef, you can use all pork if you prefer. <clears throat> Next I've got a couple eggs, just beaten up. This is gonna provide uh, some moisture and help bind it all together. I've got some dried thyme. You can use fresh tomatoes. I like tomatoes in my meatloaf. This is a can of fire roasted tomatoes that I, I did drain though. There's still plenty of juice in here. I like the fire roasted ones. Uh, they add just that extra level of flavor. If you can't get them, just get a can of regular diced tomatoes. So for a lot of people, um, <clears throat> tomatoes in the meatloaf might seem different. But that's actually what I do. I'm the meatloaf maker in this family. And one of the reasons I do it is even with drained, the juice comes out of the tomatoes in the meatloaf. So it guarantees it'll be a moist meatloaf and not dry. Well, he says he's a meatloaf maker. And indeed, he makes a delicious meatloaf, but I make it too. My recipe is a little different from his. I use onions, garlic and bell pepper in it. Today I happen to have yellow, you can use any color. And I just diced these up small and sauteed them a bit. Got them a little brown. Again, it's about adding flavor. You may not see the chunks of pepper or onion, but they're gonna get in there, provide moisture and flavor. All right, well while you're doing, what? Belay that. <laughs> what? Nothing. Did you make an oopsie? I'm not ready on my side. Oh, okay. I'm waiting for the Facebook stuff to start, so. All right. Little Worcester sauce, or Worcestershire, however you say it. About that much. Now, we have done an episode, a couple episodes on meatloaf in the past. We'll leave links to them later. Yeah, we have two of them. Now, they are from 2019, <clears throat> so that's when we were kind of still learning to do production values. So you may go, oh. But the recipes are still valid and they're still good. We may have to reshoot that Yeah, this, we've this been winter. reshooting a lot of our old episodes from yeah. 2018, 19 in our newer format. And now because we add metric for a Canadian and our UK audience. And Australia and other parts of the world. All right, gave a little bit of salt and pepper because the Worcester sauce has salt in it. 
the onions and peppers were already salted, the tomatoes, but I wanted just a little bit more. And then I have some breadcrumbs now. I have a lot of breadcrumbs here. I have oh, over a cup. I probably won't need this much. So I'm only gonna put some in, maybe about half. And this is also gonna help bind this together. Now, I'm gonna do something some of you might find a little upsetting. I'm gonna use the very first kitchen tools ever used anywhere in the world. And that is my hands, my impeccably clean hands. I'm gonna take off my watch. <clears throat> you need to get in there and feel it. Now I know someone's gonna say, you should be wearing gloves, but you need to feel it in case you need to add more breadcrumbs. So let's just start mixing this up. Lovely. All right, and while you're mixing away, let's see who's in chat. Okay. And we see Hank, our regular, is here from Arizona. Come All right, on. hi Hank. Oh, and YouTube is not showing us the Oh, oh well. Faces again. Well, everyone, it's morning here in cool Arizona, 86 degrees. 100 days now for you. Oh, it's cool 86. All right. Well, yeah, it's cool here this morning. It's going it's, up to 80 here today. It's going to 80. Up at our campground where we were yesterday closing up, it was 41. All right. This is pretty well mixed, but it's still feeling a little wetter than I would like, so I'm going to add a little bit more. I wish you out there could all be here with your impeccably clean hands so you could feel this to feel where it should be. All right. Now this is still moist, still, but it's not wet, and that's the difference. All right. Now, I like to freeform my meatloaf. Let's move this out of the way. All right. There, we finally have our connection between YouTube and all that. Okay. No more cooking in the camping kitchen from Carl. No, not this year. It is, as Phil said, it's in the 40s up there during the day and lower at night. And uh, so we're closed up for the season. And we're ready. We go up there every weekend from May till September. And usually by Labor Day, you know, it's a three hour drive each way. So it, it's a little tiring. And shout out to our son, Kevin, who yes. helped us close because some of you know that I fell off a ladder last year and broke my shoulder, so I don't do ladders anymore. So nope. Kevin was the brave one who got up on the roof and pulled the cover on and did all the ladder work. All right. Now, I just kind of form this into a loaf <clears throat> or a shape. Now, let me just rinse my hands quickly. Meatloaf pan or baking sheet. You want to feel that one, dear? Yeah, hold on, <laughs> let me get the right Perfect. screen up for me. Yes, so it's traditionally done in a meatloaf pan or a, a or, pan. Or a loaf pan. Um, we're not fans of that, and the reason we're not is is that the pans get really hot on the sides and tend to make the sides really crispy. Also, the, the fat and the grease coming out of the meat, because you should be using 80-20 uh, and not super lean, tends to allow it to swim. Freeform, we can make it a little bit flatter in a pan, and the sides have got the same temperature as the top, so you get even browning and even crispness all the way around. Also, we have to prefer the shape of long and thin because it cooks better. In our opinion. In our opinion. Now, a lot of people like to glaze their meatloaves. My mother never did. She never cared for it. Sometimes, if we begged her, she would begrudgingly slap some ketchup on it. And I think that's what most people use. We like to switch it up. Today, I'm gonna to glaze this with barbecue sauce. Sometimes we use mustard, sometimes we use uh, steak sauce, or tomato sauce, but today we're going barbecue. And we're just going to paint this on lightly. Don't want a big, huge crust that will <clears throat> burn or just be a big, loppy mess, but a nice, light coating. And all around, on the sides, on the ends. I think this kind of helps seal in some of the flavor too. As long as it's not too thick, it won't burn. Yeah. We want to give it flavor. We don't want to make it a gel top. Now, because this is glazed, I'm gonna cook this at 
325. If it were not glazed, what's that? 165 in Celsius? Uh, 150. Okay. Yeah. 180 is 350. Yeah, I don't have our cheat sheet with us. All You're right. probably right, 160. So if I were, if I didn't have glaze on it, I would do it at 350 Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius. <clears throat> My mother, who was not the greatest cook in the world, would just drown everything with ketchup. She would take an entire bottle, pour it on the top, and spread it out. <sighs> Bless her soul. <laughs> so uh, the magic of TV, I'm going to put this back here. And then, looky, I made one earlier. Ta-da! Earlier as in one hour ago. Well, this morning anyway. So we're going to have a little taste. All right, hold on. i got a few questions right. coming in. Okay, that's fine. Oh, here's a good one from Kevin. Thoughts on using ground lamb in the meat mix? Yes, that is excellent and delicious. Good idea. You absolutely can use ground lamb. Yes, Preston, I know. Oh, and, and look who's joined us today. <clears throat> Hey, Isaac. How's it going? Welcome to LCTV. Glad you're here. Oh, interesting. Now YouTube is, is now putting the... Uh... All right. Don't worry about that, dear. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Really, it doesn't matter. So yeah, ground land would be a great idea. Manhattan's during the day. Brave men. So a few years ago, we took our first very real vacation, and we went on a cruise. And we, were, we had our friend Gwen with us, and we were traveling with a whole big group of people, but three of us got on the ship first, and it was like 11.30 in the morning, and Gwen had been on many cruises. She's like, okay, we, we should get lunch now because it'll be really busy afterwards. Okay, so we went and got lunch, and she ordered a Long Island iced tea, and I thought, I'm going to have a Diet Coke. And then my husband orders two... Bullet Rye Manhattan straight up. And I thought, ugh, 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay, let's do this. Well, but so. wait, it was a cruise with unlimited alcohol, 24 yeah. hours a day, and premium top shelves. So their lowest Manhattan is as good, if not better, than our highest. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to take this off of here, hopefully. And I'm going to cut it in the pan. No. Now you can see there's some juice that dripped out, some of the fat and things. <clears throat> now my mother would take this and make gravy out of it. I'm not feeling that clever today. But it would be this rich tomatoey gravy from the tomatoes in there. I put pieces of bread around the meatloaf on the sheet pan to soak up the fat. Huh, that's interesting. I've never heard of that before, but that's an interesting idea. Yeah, in concept, that should work fine. Mm -hmm. Of course, then you don't have the fat to use for the drippings, for the gravy. The gravy. All right, I'm just going to cut us a couple of hunks. I suppose you just do it this way for the camera. Yeah, there you go. All right. Ooh, pretty. Nice and thick. And you lay one on your knife and show it up. There we ah, go. There we go. Pretty. You can see all the colors from the peppers and the tomatoes. All right. <clears throat> and in reality, no two pe people's meatloaf are the same. No two people's what they put in it. Or spices. I've seen people put the entire spice cabinet in there. Well, um, for me, no two of my meatloaves ever come out the same way. I have a recipe that we clearly have up for our episode. But for the most part, when I make a meatloaf, I just kind of throw in what I think will taste good that day. All right, taste time. <clears throat> All right. Well, here's uh, lunch tomorrow. Mmm, that's good. Mm-hmm. Mm, it is. Yep. I like it cold. Yeah, this is nice at room temperature. And that's the most important thing. When you make a meatloaf and you take it out of the oven, you may think, oh, I want to cut into this right away. Uh-uh. You have to let it rest a good 15 to 20 minutes because just like when you cook a roast or a turkey or a chicken, if you cut into it as soon as it comes out of the oven, all the juices are going to run out. In this case, it's going to crumble and the juices will run out. If you let it rest, the juices get reabsorbed and it sets up into a nice cohesive loaf. 
Good, finishing my shift. Glad you were doing a live. Well, we do this every other weekend, every other Sunday, Isaac, so we hope to see you more often. And Isaac is a chef. Yes. Um, and a very good one, and we see him quite often at our campground. Yes, he's one of my friends. I have several friends who are real chefs in restaurants and things, and <clears throat> I have my little humble show here, but that's okay. From Kathy, best late night snack is a meatloaf sandwich. Okay, well, we like our meatloaf sandwiches. No, we like our midnight snack. So I'm not well, sure. that's true. That's true. I don't know that I have meatloaf for a midnight snack, but we have. And we certainly could. All right, here's a very, very good question. This just came in through Facebook. Oh, well, press has got to be. Oh, well. Can you make meatloaf ahead of time from Jill? Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure how much ahead of time you mean, but you know, if you were going to serve this for dinner tonight, you could make it in the afternoon, get it done fully like this, and then serve it at room temperature or heat it up a little bit right before you serve it. Uh, you can also make this ahead of time a day before, I would imagine, wrap it up tightly and then serve it the next day. Again, just heat it up a little bit. It's one of those great things. This is one of those things that's actually better the next day because all those flavors really get a chance to come and marry. Thank you, Isaac. Meatloaf sandwich the next day, great lunch. Yes, Hank, absolutely. Now, if, if you're like <laughs> Phil, you'd have to slather it and actually fill in our sun. Have Hold on. The, slather it with cheese. The meatloaf expert has just checked in. Uh-oh. Oh, hi, Tony. I laugh when you say that serves four. It looks like a single serving to me. Well, you know, Dixie's going to say the same thing, Tony. Uh, <laughs> Dixie this... only gets to make it for herself. Right. There's the, chicken on the... the other side. Yeah. This will serve a family of four, but... Uh, a yeah. normal family of four. Right. Normally, Phil and I could, could wipe this out in a single evening. And we, we always say, we're not going to do that. And, well, then we do. I'm just telling, giving a little commercial oh, okay. here. Okay. So if you're watching this live, <clears throat> jump in chat. We love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. We'll put up what we can. If you're in Facebook, type it in a direct message. I'll see it. I'll have to retype that one because my software can't do it automatically. But man, it looks like YouTube is having issues today. We sometimes oh. can see your picture and sometimes we can't. You should have put the camera on yourself while you were doing all that. I mean, I love the camera being on me. Don't get me wrong. What? There you are. What? Okay. There you are. <laughs> well, I have to look down for the Facebook I stuff, know. so. That's all right. Oh, here's a good one. From Carly, how much fat content for the beef? So I grew up, my mother made it with just ground beef. She always used 80-20. There was a time where she went to 85-15, but never more than that because then it gets too dry, and then you have to add fat. Um... I, I prefer the 80-20, but that's also why I like this mix, because the veal and the pork are a little leaner, but you still have the fat from the 80-20 beef. So you get a great flavor, but it's not overwhelmingly with fat. When I used to make it with just plain 80-20 beef, it was delicious, but the amount of drippings in the pan was 10 times this amount. I used to have to make it in a very deep pan because it would just all come out and it was swim in it. Okay, evidently Kenzie's alive this morning. Hey, your demon granddaughter loves cheese on everything, too. <laughs> I don't have a demon granddaughter. I have your daughter, who is my granddaughter. But perhaps the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, Kevin. I know she likes cheese on everything because she's your daughter. And you are your father's son, so. Oh, here's a nice thank you. From Greg, I just made your Roman chicken recipe on Friday. OMG, well thanks Greg. Yeah, that was the original, that's how chicken cacciatore is made in that part of Italy even today. It, it's not made uh, with tomatoes, which is kind of interesting, but it is delicious. Hold on, you can't have a drink without me. <sighs> really? Really? Cheers, dear. So I should play True Confessions. Uh, so two weeks ago during the live stream, uh, <laughs> I was sick. I was actually day one of having COVID. And I woke up that morning, I had a raging fever, and I felt like death warmed over. And I thought, okay, we can't cancel. I got to do this. And I thought, I need to be like one of, like, like Ginger Rogers, who danced for 20 hours until her feet bled. I just have to push through it and push through it. So 
I had a lot of makeup on and I did my best. Fortunately now, two weeks later, we're both COVID free and feeling a lot, lot better. So if you look at last time and I was kind of like, oh, chips and I'm a little I'm more animated today. That's, that's why. My mother cooked on a schedule. Meatloaf was every Tuesday from Sarah. Oh, that's great. I know a lot of people used to do that. The only thing we have on a schedule is we tend to do salad Wednesdays. I don't know why, uh, but it's just our little quirky thing. Um, and our salad Wednesdays is a bowl of salad about the yay big, but it's with some protein on the top. But it's not necessarily just lettuce and tomatoes. Oh no, no, we do very you know, exotic salads. Yeah, I'll, I'll do like all random vegetables and make a salad out of it. And we are fortunate to have a ton of really good farmers markets right around here, and a commercial wholesaler um, called Virtuous right around the corner, so we can get fresh produce. And yeah, it's great to do things like beets and. And snap peas and all sorts of butternut things. Butternut squash and yeah. acorn squashes and all the really crazy things. Brussels sprouts and eggplants and all kinds of weird things that we put in to make a salad. So, I, I, you know, I have to wonder, meatloaf is kind of, I, I find people either love it or hate it. <clears throat> How often do you make meatloaf from Tammy? Well, not often. No, every couple months. Yeah. My mother used to make it. My mother didn't cook on a schedule. Exactly. Uh, Sunday night dinner was her big event, and and you know the, all the everyone had to come home for Sunday night dinner, and I kind of have that too, that habit. But she would rotate. It would be one week a roast beef, the next week a roast pork, a turkey, a meatloaf, and she would just keep rotating those few things. So I make it. We have it. Well, not even once a month. I don't eat red meat anymore, but I used to love meatloaf. What can I substitute? Well, that's a great question. So certainly, you know, the first thing that comes to mind would be uh, turkey or chicken. You would just want to add more fat to it because those are both very lean. Um, like I love turkey burgers, but they, they get dried out really easily. So you, you're going to have to add some fat to it. You could use butter or olive oil. If you eat pork, you could mix in some ground pork. Um, or bacon, if you eat bacon. In the kitchen with Karen. Hello, gentlemen. Happy Sunday. I have to get ready for work, but I'm listening. We love meatloaf. Hi, Karen. It's great to see you as always. Thank you for joining. I was just thinking about something. <laughs> we um, have an interesting way of serving meatloaf when we're doing it for friends. Do you have that muffin pan? Oh, oops, yeah, I was supposed to bring that up from the... Yes, you were. Why don't you tell me what we do? So, well, so sometimes I, I like I like taking things like this and I think, okay, how can I take a hummel meatloaf and serve it for a fancy dress-up dinner? And one of the great ways is to make little individual ones. So I'll make it in a muffin tin or I will buy little aluminum foil loaf pans and stuff it and do it that way. Especially I do that at Halloween because it looks like a coffin. Um, but that's a great way to kind of fancy it up. <coughs> Excuse me. I still have a cough from my little bat with COVID. Ooh, um, here's a really interesting one. I know this answer, but okay. this might be new to a lot of people. When I read meatloaf recipes, they use the word panade from AJ. So what's a panade? Panade is... Uh, and some people do this for meatloaf or meatballs. You see this a lot when you're making meatballs. You take some bread, whatever kind, you soak it in milk until it gets mushy, and then you squeeze the excess milk out and you have this moist bread. Some people do it with breadcrumbs too. And what that does is it helps bind and adds moisture. Now, I did not soak my breadcrumbs in that, but the breadcrumbs would be the same thing as a panade. And I didn't because I knew this would have enough moisture with the tomatoes and the other vegetables in there that they would help soak that up and bind it together. <laughs> oh, Dixie duh it's called meatloaf forget the chicken or turkey well okay for you Dixie yeah I, I agree I agree but uh, not but everyone wait, Dixie couldn't you get away with always making chicken by having a chicken meatloaf for him I'm just saying ah. and I think I need to do a roast pork episode. For and Dr. A... Mike is in the house. Well, hello, Dr. Mike. And it's it, it should be near dinner time for him right around now. So you could be making meatloaf. So Dixie tells me her, besides meatloaf, her favorite 
meal is roast pork. So I think we need to do a, a, a roast pork recipe for Dixie, maybe next week. Oh, here's an interesting one. Um, hold on, I gotta type this one in because uh -huh. it came in through Facebook. Here we go. My wife uses crushed up saltines instead of breadcrumbs, adds a bit more salt and texture. Oh yeah, you know, that's great. And that's something that was very popular in the 40s and 50s when there were still food shortages, especially after the war. Um, saltines were something that you could get. And I've done that too. I've used saltines in things that uh, in place of breadcrumbs or bread or something. And you're right, it does add a great texture and a little different flavor. Okay, I can't type this in because it just came over my cell phone. Someone is commenting that the cheese balls look almost empty. Were you hungry? <laughs> hey, those cheese balls lasted two weeks, especially when I was sick. So I, I, I think I got a gold star or at least maybe a, a platinum, uh, I don't know, bronze star. Well, may, maybe you could tie in the fact that our last live streams was all about stuff in the chip aisle. What could you right. crush up from the chip aisle and put in your meat? Oh, meat? you could absolutely use potato chips, especially a kettle chip that would be nice and crunchy. You absolutely could do that. I suppose people could use corn chips too, like Fritos or something, to make it kind of southwesterny. Okay, it's half an hour in, it's one o'clock. Already, wow. It is uh, time for my favorite segment. Um, as most of you know, I'm very involved with lots of other small channels, and we've made it our mission in the live streams to make sure that we highlight another small channel that's working hard to give you entertainment and to teach you stuff and to, whoops, I'm lost for words today. Okay, so let's just get into it. So today we're talking about cooking with Steven and Jacqueline and they um, are from uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And so they have some really great recipes that use as a matter of fact, I watched their uh, spicy buffalo chicken yesterday, and it's like, oh, it's Sunday. We should make chicken. And really good stuff. Uh, we're big lamb eaters, so spicy lamb. They're just getting started on their journey, and we want you to help them. And remember, one of the great things about interacting with small channels is if you leave a comment, you're going to get an answer right away. They're not so big that they can't answer every question anymore. So jump into uh, Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline. Say hi that you were from our live stream. Watch their videos. Give them a thumbs up while you're there. Give us a thumbs up on today's uh, video. Okay, and the commercial is over and back Yay. to the host. And back to meatloaf. Wait, so back to meatloaf? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, I'll go back to meatloaf. No problem. All right, there you go, dear. Eat away. <clears throat> so, yeah, I guess I probably make meatloaf not even once a month. Even though I always seem to have one of these meatloaf mixes in my freezer. I kind of, when I don't have one, I get upset and I always have to go and buy one. It's like a comfort food security blanket because I might want to make meatloaf. Although, I use that to make meatballs too. How can you tell if a meatloaf is done without a thermometer? <laughs> Uh, that's a tough one because I'm so used to using a thermometer. Um, <clears throat> really, if you cook it for, you know, at, at 325 for maybe 25, 35 minutes, it's going to be done because of carryover cooking. When you pull it out to rest, you can always tent it loosely with foil and that's going to help tent it, uh, bring up that temperature. What you're going to look for is like for this, in this example, for this meatloaf, it's much darker than say this one, you can see this is redder and this is darker. So clearly it's done. It's also firm. When you touch it, it's firm. This is kind of smushy. Um, but really the best thing is to use a thermometer so that way there's no guessing and there's no overcooking. So I always, always, always recommend investing in one of these guys, these little stick thermometers, these little instant reads. And there's lots of really cheap yeah. ones, but you'll notice that <clears throat> all of the cooking channels and yeah. chefs really this, use these. They're $99, they're but not it's, cheap. It's, it's worth the investment. It is worth the investment, you can't kill them. And when they say instant read, it's instant. Yeah. It's it, one it's, second, yeah. right on the number. Yeah. 
not hold it in for four or five seconds and pull it around and find out no. it's right on the money. It's perfect if you just need to pop the oven door open and check something quickly without letting the heat out for too long. The other thing I invest in is this type of thermometer that has a probe. And this particular model is good has because two there's two probes. So there's two probes and they just plug in and then you have this outside the oven and this inside the oven and then you can get the temperature while it's cooking. And you can set it so an alarm goes off at your desired temperature. So that's the other tool that will always help you make sure things don't get undercooked or overcooked. Yes, thank you, Dr. Clayton. Yes. <laughs> and uh, a plug, if you look down in the show notes uh, for today, you'll see the link to um, uh, Stephen and Jacqueline's channel. You'll also see the links to our much older episodes on uh, meatloaf yeah. and stuffed meatloaf. Stuffed meatloaf. <clears throat> and a little further down, there are links to... Um, that particular um, thermometer, because thermometer, that is dual. Yeah. So like when you're doing turkey, you can put one part of it in the breast and one, one part, part of it in the thigh. And it's under $30 US. Yeah. All right, what else do we have, dear? Hold on, I'm working on it. Okay. I'm typing as fast as I can. Don't laugh, but we use stovetop stuffing instead of milk-soaked bread chunks. Okay, I guess that would add some more herbs and salt, so you could probably cut down the salt, I would imagine. But it probably tastes really good. I don't remember the last time I made stovetop stuffing. We stopped eating processed foods like that a long time ago. But I can, I can, I can see where that could work, especially yeah. if you've had issues of having really wet meatloaf. Right. That might do it. Because it is so, so even drier than breadcrumbs. And what the problem is, is most people are so terrified that their meat loaf is going to be dry, they add way too much liquid. I've seen people just pour milk in and then cook it, and it completely falls apart. Yeah. Yeah. Now, for stovetop stuffing, my sister uh, used to uh, buy it and then pound it down and use it as breading for chicken. From Mary, why does my meatloaf always crack while cooking? Hmm. Well, I wonder what temperature you're cooking at because it sounds like maybe you're cooking at a little too high of a temperature. I like it when it's glazed, like I said, 325 and then uh, 350 if it's not glazed. How about a meatloaf casserole? Okay, I'm not what, what sure. What would a meatloaf casserole I, be? I don't know. <laughs> We just played Stump the Chef. Ask all, all of our church lady friends out there, like, what's a meatloaf casserole? I guess you could do it kind of like a shepherd's pie, maybe. Oh, put uh, mashed potatoes on put top, mashed potatoes maybe dollops on the top. of it. So you, right. <clears throat> That's an interesting one. Yeah. Isaac, who's in chat, who's a chef, could you think of something to do? Or Karen in the kitchen, could you think of something to do as a meatloaf casserole? That might be interesting. I don't make many casseroles. We do not. I think because most casseroles are like, you know, a can of cream and mushroom soup, a can of cream and celery soup, and blah, blah, blah. And I just don't cook that way. All right, what else is out there? We just talked about that. We did? Okay. We did, because I said you're probably cooking at too high of a temperature. Oh, okay. All that typing for nothing. <sighs> See that, dear? Kevin, isn't meatloaf essentially a casserole? Mm, not really. No, not really. I mean, I guess I... Stop I guess, the chef number two. No, I guess you could say that, especially if you make it in a loaf pan. It would be a meat casserole, but I wouldn't consider it. <coughs> Excuse me, a casserole. Though I could see his point, because it has bread and vegetables and, and, and tomatoes and... and yeah, I can see that. It's got a bunch of stuff together, cooking together. But then, you know, that, that would mean like meatballs would be a casserole, and I don't think I would consider meatballs for spaghetti meatballs. This is a good one. We can talk about this one for quite a bit here. Um, okay. Hold on. 
I have to Goodness. pull this over from YouTube, uh, from Facebook, and it takes a second. I'll finish my drink while you're doing there that. There you go. Whoops. Let me get rid of. Can I use that same recipe to make meatballs from cat? You could. You might want to adjust it a little bit. Um, most meatballs call for using a panade, which is bread soaked with milk or breadcrumb soaked with milk. But yeah, you could use the same recipe. The thing to do would be like anything else, they'd have to rest so they would set up. What I would do if I would use the same recipe and make meatballs, whereas <laughs> I make this into a meatloaf and <laughs> pop it in the oven, I would let the meat, meatballs rest in the fridge maybe for 30 minutes or so, so they have a chance to tighten up and, and stay formed. But you can definitely use this mixture of meats to make meatballs. Okay. Dick Dixie says, absolutely no <laughs> to a chicken meatloaf. <laughs> well, not a chicken meatloaf. No, no, no. <laughs> That's just wrong. Well, I'll, I'll do a roast pork in a couple weeks for you, Dixie. Uh, we haven't done much pork lately, so. From Captain Zero, my mom's meatloaf was always gray and dried out. I like your recipe. Well, thank you. You know, it's funny. My high school had really, really good food except for the meatloaf. And it was that same type of charcoal gray lump. It didn't, have, if it had anything in it, it was overcooked and dried out and flavorless. And they would drown it in gravy, and that was the best part. But, Ooh, yeah. Since you're... Since you're talking about gravy, let's transition to all the things that you could put on top of it, like gravy <clears throat> and things like well, that. Well, you know, traditionally, I think, traditionally, uh, what do you have with meatloaf? You have mashed potatoes and gravy. So you could usually have brown gravy or mushroom gravy. Um, but I have seen where people have made other sauces for it. So if you're doing more of an Italian style or just a little more tomato heavy recipe, I've seen people that have made a tomato sauce for it. Italian household top with marinara and mozzarella from Patty. Sure, absolutely. So it's a meatball parmesan. Or a meatloaf parmesan, Meat yeah. 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 But I have seen tomato sauces. Uh, I, have, I have seen gravies made with mustard, more of a mustard sauce for it. So you can put whatever you want on it. And that's one of the great things about meatloaf is it's a blank canvas. You have the meat, and then what direction are you going to take it? Are you going to go Italian? Are you going to go Asian? Are you going to go traditional American? Could you make it spicy? Absolutely. You could do a spicy meatloaf. And even in that, Southwestern spicy, Italian spicy. You could mix some ground sausage into it and go in that direction. When we were researching this the other day, um, there's a lot of them that are using tacos and taco chips to dry it out and um, salsas all across the top. So yeah. there's a lot of <clears throat> mm -hmm. really cool meatloaves. Yeah, I'm not a big Southwestern cuisine fan. Like I like Mexican, but the Southwestern or Tex-Mex, um, I haven't had much that I like. So I, don't, I tend to stay away from using uh, taco chips and things. Love mushrooms and gravy over my meatloaf from Lisa. Me too. That, that's one of my favorites. But I, I might warn that if you put mushrooms in your meatloaf. You want to cook them first. You want to cook them first because they, release they leach a, a lot, lot of water. water. Yeah. So you'll end up with a very, very wet meatloaf. So cook them first, which will also intensify their mushroom flavor. Oh, oh, oh. The answer for everyone who's not sure what to put on anything. Bacon, bacon, and more Bacon. And look bacon. who it's from. From Grillmaster 2000. Okay, I don't know who that is, but <laughs> bacon, 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 and more bacon. Well, sure. And, you know, like if I were making all ground pork or even a ground turkey meatloaf, I might want to mix in some ground up bacon to give it that fat and smokiness uh, or put it on top. But you have to be careful with doing that with bacon because it seems that so many people, how do I flavor? Oh, I'll wrap something in bacon, and then everything is wrapped in bacon, and it, it's kind of overdone. Doesn't mean I don't do it once in a while, but it, it, I think it has been overdone a little bit. Nom, 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 nom. <clears throat> you know, you think that I don't feed him. <laughs> okay. Here's somebody who really knows us well. Is there a wine that goes with meatloaf from Ken? Okay, Ken. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good question. Um, with this... 
Okay, I would probably serve my finest boxo, my <laughs> finest card Bordeaux. Uh, no, but I would go with a Merlot or, uh, you know, if it's beef, Merlot or Cab Sav, uh, or if, if there's some blend that you like, I would go with a simple red wine with it. If you were making a turkey meatloaf, then I might be inclined to go with a, a white wine or a rosé, something dry to counterbalance, something dry and tart, the heaviness of the, or the fattiness of the meatloaf, that, that unctuous part, you need something to kind of cut that sometimes. But you know, my favorite card Bordeaux, black box Merlot, every time. <laughs> what else is happening in chat? Is there anyone? Chat's a little quiet. Oh, all right. Of course, Kevin, I agree. Wrap the loaf up in bacon. Now, we got 30 people watching this live. That's Ask awesome. Ask your questions. <clears throat> or make your comments. Yeah, Kevin, but, you know, a little bacon goes a long way. Though, we haven't bought it in a while at our local Amish market. They do a pork roast that is a pork loin that they, they cut and unroll. They stuff it with their own sausage, roll it back up, wrap it in their own bacon, and then tie it. And it, it's incredible. I have kind of duplicated it, kind of. I can't get the perfect spiral that they get on it. Uh, I think they have a machine that cuts it down like that, but uh, it's a delicious thing. And that's one of the few times where I say, yes, wrap it in bacon. Because those loins of pork can be a little lean too, and a little dry. I don't think we've ever tried wrapping a meatloaf in bacon. Halloween is coming. Have you ever made a meatloaf foot or face from Margaret? Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I have. Uh, many years ago, we were at a Halloween camping rally with our camping group, Canvas Campers. And <clears throat> so I made for the potluck a, a face, a meatloaf face. And I, I think I used garlic cloves as the teeth and olives as the eyes. And it was great fun. Uh, of course, no one took pictures of it. They just devoured it. But it, it was kind of fun. And I know the big thing this time of year is you see the, the foot that people make that's like 3D and has the onions for toenails. I haven't tried that, but I, I, I've done the face. Or they've done the hands with the <clears throat> fingernails. Right. Yeah. Uh, Dixie is being very, very adamant here. Stop using her chicken or turkey meatloaf. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> I think uh, Tony Stage Right 17 would agree with that. So then, Dixie, what would you like in a meatloaf? Would you eat ground lamb in a meatloaf, or would you prefer all beef? Or would you like this, this mixture of uh, veal, pork, and beef? Kevin, fine, put the bacon in the loaf. Yes, Kevin, not everything has to have cheese or bacon, but I know, I know what you're gonna say, cheese is good, I know. Yeah, I wonder where you got that from. Yeah. Yeah, my husband who can't have a sandwich unless it has cheese on it. Radioactive cheese, to be specific. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're Back getting to a consensus comment, here. No to turkey. Hank agrees. I don't think I've ever made a turkey meatloaf, have I? We have not. No, we've made the occasional turkey burger, but uh, if we're going to do turkey, we I prefer a whole. We right tend to do turkey. entire turkeys, and we are extremely lucky that at our campground that we have a complete outdoor kitchen with a great stove. As um, you've seen, if you've been watching our live yeah, streams. Yeah, so we actually do turkey pretty <clears throat> regularly, especially yeah. when we have a full house of six or eight people yeah. staying with us for the weekend. Um, and Even when uh, us, I, you know, Stage Right, Tony used to visit us. Uh, every Friday loaf. he'd be saying, is we having meatloaf? So we would have meatloaf for him. I actually cook turkey several times a year. I don't, I don't wait for Thanksgiving. We, we have it five or six times a year. Even if it's just a small turkey breast, we'll have it. <laughs> My grandmother made a meatloaf from leftover cooked meat, and it was always topped with bacon. Nasty. Wow, leftover cooked meat. Oh, my. I would assume she ground it up. It's a good way to lose, use leftovers, I guess. And top with bacon. Oh. And yet you still like meatloaf. Well, that's good. There, there's hope then. I don't know, if you ground some lamb up, it might be sort of a shepherd's, shepherd's pie, type pie but ugh. Well, I have ground lamb in the freezer. Maybe I'll have to make a ground lamb meatloaf and see how it comes out. Hmm. 
Are we out of questions? We're out of Facebook questions. Let's okay. see what's happening in chat. That's really got me thinking, ground lamb meatloaf. And that would make me... See, that would be something that if I were doing a dinner party, and instead of doing a regular meatloaf in little muffin cups, I would do it with ground lamb just to kind of screw with people, uh, but just to do something different. And that little individual circle, you know, it's so easy to make it look fancy. And the lamb would get, be a great opportunity to give different flavors and flavor combinations. We've done uh, meatloaf coffins and sliced off the top. Right, that's my stuffed meatloaf. And propped it open and then put um, well, when you skeletons in it yeah. and all sorts of things. Yeah. For Halloween, like this year, we're having a dinner party instead of a regular party. And one of the things I used to do was these little individual meatloaf coffins in the little tiny loaf pans. And you stuff it with uh, pepper, spinach, and mozzarella cheese. Rotting so guts. it looks like a rotting corpse. And then I would have these little food safe plastic skeletons that I would kind of hang out. I'd slice the top off and turn it and then have little skeletons hanging out of it. So it was kind of creepy and fun. I think that's what we did our episode with for the stuffed meatloaf. I will taste test your lamb meatloaf. I'm sure you will, Kev. We'll have to give him some project. Yeah. <laughs> you have to earn it, Kevin. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Dixie just made my day here. Hold on. <clears throat> You're just going to stand there with that meatloaf. Call FedEx and get it on to an end. <laughs> yeah. Well, last week, And if two it weeks was ago, yesterday, we could have just drove it over to you because... Kevin helped me close up the campground last night, uh, yesterday, and you know we were putting covers on trailers and uh, packing everything up. We could just drove it over. <laughs> Two weeks ago, you're telling me stop eating the chips, stop eating the chips. Don't worry, this will not survive the night. This will probably be our dinner tonight. We'll see. Well, that's nice, Kev. Well. You can go to the store. What, Kevin, why don't you do this? Make it yourself. Why don't you make your version and I'll make my version and then we can do a dual taste test. Okay, here's the bacon coming. Fine, I will hang cabinets for the new LCT. Oh, yeah, uh, fine, done. <coughs> done and done. So, you know, we've talked about before we are building a studio in our, we have a finished basement and we're taking part of it and we're building a studio down there. So uh, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to start seeing the episodes being filmed down here. The, the live streams will be from there too. Uh, so we, we need to hang some cabinets and uh, I won't have a proper stove, but you won't have the fridge behind me, but I'll have my little butane burner um, and some very beautiful cabinets that we got and a nice countertop. And more important, I don't have to break uh, set up and break down three cameras and all sorts yeah, of stuff we don't, we don't every have to lug single stuff time we want to yeah. film. So that's why sometimes there might be an episode late or we skip one because we're exhausted. And yeah. The set up and breakdown process does take a while and then add four or five hours of editing and right, sending right. it to YouTube and keywording right. it. So having I know, it down in the studio. So we, we have help. not been able to film Tuesday's episode yet. And the idea is that we're going to film it later today. We'll see how we feel when we get done this. Uh, but I have a crazy week coming up at work because I do still have a regular full-time job. I wish this were my full-time job. Maybe someday. Uh, but uh, Food so Network, I, I don't are know. you listening? Food Network or PBS, WHYY, are you listening? Um, so yeah, so sometimes we may have an episode come out a day late or we just have to skip it because... You know, there are just some days where I can't, I can't even, it, it's, uh... And actually, we can't. Yeah, we can't. Kev, Jeffrey we looked does into not it. allow a kitchen in the basement, then it becomes an apartment, and it's a whole another set of rules. You have to have egress and ventilation. Yeah. We can get away with having a little butane burner, uh, but as a permanent fixture, yeah, we already looked into it. If we had had a walk out like some of the other houses do, then it might be different, but since we don't have that, we can't have it. All right, we are coming up on our hour. Really? Wow, that went fast. Yeah, a couple more minutes. Um, in two weeks, our next episode will be called Decadent Desserts. Oh, is it? Okay. Surprise. <laughs> what do I need to know for? The producer makes the theme choices. The host has to figure out how to make it happen. Yes, dear. So it's Decadent Desserts. Yes, dear. 
And this is coming from yes, two dear. people that are diabetic who don't eat dessert. So yes, dear. this should be very, very interesting. There's going to be chocolate. I know you don't like chocolate. I You're don't a bad like gay. chocolate. You're, you're I'm a not gay. a. I'm a bad gay. No chocolate. <sighs> well, too bad. There's going to be chocolate. I think I foresee my French chocolate mousse, which is certainly decadent. There could be chocolate sundaes. There could be. Uh, I'm after the bakery because. <clears throat> and of course, now that the summer is over, life is coming back into our YouTube channel. And yeah, what happened yesterday? We had. Almost a thousand views of Scottish shortbread. So yep. yay! Maybe Scottish shortbread. Well, of course, Scottish shortbread. I mean, time to glam up pumpkin pie. Well, no, that's true, Kev. You're right, and I, I actually have several ways to do that. One of which is the ginger pumpkin mousse that I make, but I have a few others too uh, that I've made. I think I actually made for you last year. Uh, so yeah, there's and of lots course, of ways. Last to glam night up we had pie. banana cream pudding pie. pie. Banana cream pie from Bingham's Diner in, what town is that? It's somewhere in Pennsylvania near our campground. It's just up I know Dixie, Grantonville. Dixie and Phil yeah. and, and uh, Tony stage right know about a Bingham's, Bingham's restaurant. They're known for their pies and their bakery. And since he and Kevin were up closing the campground, when they were on their way down Route 81, they saw the signs. They called and said, uh, you want a pie? And I said, yes, please. There might have been a couple of... Cream, cream puffs, puffs involved. Too. Yeah, did Kenzie leave us any cream puffs, Kevin? Because I know that she had some last night. I could turn around and look in the fridge, but, you know, mm -hmm. I'm way too lazy. All right. Let's call it a day. Everyone's so, got things to do. We appreciate yeah. our audience over in the UK and Canada. And, and Australia uh, and everywhere else. If Daniela from Blackback Kitchen, Black Cat Kitchen is watching... Please notice what's over my shoulder. And this is for you, the black cat in. And so, what's coming up next on LCTV? Well, it's officially autumn. There's going to be, even though it's 80s day, it's getting colder. So, there's going to be more soups and stews. I'm going to be working with a lot of these uh, autumn vegetables, the squashes. Uh, things like that. Uh, right today, I am finalizing a test on a corn chowder to use up the end of the summer corn that we're still getting because, you know, it goes a little bit into fall. Um, and, and Jersey uh, corn is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So there's going to be a corn chowder coming up. It might have lobster in it. We'll see. Um, How about the cocktail episodes? We got one coming up. So I have one coming up that we also need to film today, which is, a, I've talked about this before, a cucumber martini. And we, we keep saying, oh, we're going to film it for Friday, and then something happens, and we can't film it for Friday. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's really interesting. And actually, it's good for Halloween because it's green. So you might think, like, oh, a green cocktail, it's really refreshing and really yummy, and you can make it year-round. It's not just for summertime. So we have that coming up. We have working with, still exploring the mother sauces. The next one will be the tomato sauce, uh, which you're going to think, okay, that's just marinara. But it isn't. It's similar, but it's not quite. It's the basis for marinara, the base of it. Um, so yeah, and we'll be doing finally the, the espanol, which is the brown sauce, which is the most complicated of them. We're saving that for last. And if you have ideas that you'd like to see on either our live streams or episodes, hop over to our website at letscelebrate.tv, hit the contact button and tell us what you want to see. And I will point out that most of the stuff that you saw tonight that wasn't in chat that came from Facebook actually came through our website. People ask us questions yep. and we yeah. type them in and hold them for these episodes. Mm -hmm. Also, the website's a little better when you want to do some searching. YouTube is not really good when you want to find out chicken recipes that we've created. They show you everyone's. If you come to our website and type in chicken, you can do all sorts of stuff. Or send us an email at info at Let's Celebrate TV. And again, we'll answer it. We will see if we can work it into the schedule. Let us know. Some of the greatest and ideas come in well, from our those, viewers. Those are some more of the episodes you're going to see coming up is one of our friends and viewers sent us in the mail a... Uh, several recipes that he makes all the time, and he's also a chef. So we're going to be featuring those, too, and we'll certainly shout him out for that. But uh, lots of yummy stuff coming up. All right. It is 
in the afternoon on the East Coast of the U.S. It's time to wrap this up and let everyone else get back to their lives. Our West Coast people are probably still having breakfast. Our UK audience Brunch. is about to go to dinner and have a pint. Yep. And we will see you all in two, two weeks. weeks. All right, until we'll, next time. Bye. Cheers. We'll be in chat for about two more minutes if you have any ideas and you want to talk to us. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you later. Yep.